Here's my animation. So if you're looking right here, what you can notice here is we have, um, I'll um, push play, pause. I know it doesn't work. Okay, notice how what's happening, I'm going to keep pushing play. They're actually just sliding along. So this is a basically a transform fault fault. They call it a strike slip fault. They're just sliding. So they're moving in opposite direction. All right. So this is the, a shear force. This is related to the shear force. So that's how that works. Okay. Now, the forces aren't always in a perfect direction. So let's kind of visit about uh, this strike and dip fault. Uh, and when you have a strike and a dip, it turns out that you measure a strike, and then you're going to measure the dip. Okay. Are you a dip? <laughs> I hope not. So there's a strike. The strike is actually the direction on which this goes. Let me get you the definition of strike. It's the direction of a line formed by the intersection of the inclined surface and an imaginary horizontal plane. The direction of the line is expressed as the bearing, which is the angular difference between true north and the strike line. Now that's a lot of words to basically say if you've got a compass, okay, what direction does the strike form? The strike is essentially, if you look at it, the strike on this particular graph, you want to jot this down or sketch it, is A to B. So you geometry people would understand that we can talk about a line segment, but this line segment now is the earth. If this is pointing true north, true north, then it would be zero degrees. If this is pointing directly to the east, it would be 90 degrees or whatever. And so it has, it's like a compass pointing in the right direction. Now the dip, let's go to the dip now. The dip is the angle of the inclined surface below the imaginary horizontal plane. The dip is always measured perpendicular to the strike line. Again, that's a lot of words, but here's the scoop on it. It's the angle at which there's the dip. So this red piece, there is a, a, a fault, um, a strike slip fault. And that fault is right here, A, B. And the angle is the, um, is the dip. So they're calling it the AC dip. All right, what's this angle right here that we measure? So that's called a strike dip fault. Okay, there's other couple other kinds of faults called the grabbing fault. It's provided when tensional forces, look at the um, red arrows, those represent the forces, result in their kind of not represent, bleh, result in a subsidence, that means settling down to the bottom of a block of rock. On large scale, these features are known as rift valleys. See how that looks like a rift valley forming? See how it's, as time goes on, we're going to get a valley right here? You see? Because it's ripping that part apart, and then this just sinks down into the lithosphere. Okay? And then the next one, or the last one, is the Horst Fault. It is um, the development of two reverse faults. Remember, we learned about reverse faults. That's when they're coming together. And as they come together, and then you've got your... Um, your fault zone right here and here, it pushes this up. And so it's just kind of one where you've got both two tensional forces causing this to occur. If you kind of take this and cut it in half, that's a reverse fault. But the horse is kind of a combo, um, double reverse really. A double reverse isn't like a play in football. Okay, so here let's take a summary. Unfaulted, just straight, okay. All right, this is a normal fault. Remember, see how one goes up? Again, remember this is a, a tensional force. A reverse fault. Okay, man, this is a, uh, a compressional fault, and the thrust fault is also one in the opposite direction. And then the strike slip fault, notice how they're kind of going at an angle right here. And then the right lateral strike slip, we haven't really talked about right lateral versus left lateral, just the opposite. These are kind of opposites and related. All right, folding's an intriguing thing. Another thing that can happen as the, as the geology changes is that rocks will fold, okay? This is usually formed when rocks are squeezed together by compressional forces. So if you've got a force pushing this way and this way, oftentimes you'll get angled rocks, rocks that have uh, well, an angle. So if you look at this particular one, this is Rainbow Basin. Now, I'm not sure where Rainbow Basin is. I got this off of Wikipedia. But what you've got is you can see that this has a curve to it, a very distinct curve to it. These rocks have been folded. Do you see the picture of folding here? We can kind of get a picture of how they got folded. Now, not really true, ah, true down here, but you get a folding kind of the top of this rock. So this is caused by but compressive forces. Now there are two kinds of uh, varieties of folding. There is uh, an upward fold, as we see here. Notice how the when I say an upward fold, let me change to a different color. I see we go blue. I like a blue. You can see the this feature right here is an upward or convex upward fault, and that is called an anticline. Anticline is where there's an upward convex shape. 
Okay, and the opposite is called a syncline. And a syncline is a downward curving fold. Notice how this is the opposite of what we just saw, all right, etc. Now, one thing I should say about anticlines and synclines, let's go back to the anticline. Where would the oldest rock be? Hmm. Think, think, think. Where is the oldest rock? Remember we learned in the first podcast that the youngest rocks lay on top if they're presented or put down horizontally in sheets, right? Well, this probably was put down horizontally, but then there was compressional forces that pushed it together. So where would be the oldest rock? Well, the oldest rock would be at the core of the syncline, of the anticline, I mean right down here. That's your oldest rock. Now, that is not true in the syncline. In the syncline, you're going to have different things that will be younger rocks. So I want you to think about that. All right, they dip towards the center. Okay. And here's a picture of a cool syncline. Isn't that cool? Man, see how that's gotten bent? Big bending here. There's a syncline uh, to beat the band. Now let's take a look here. In fact, this is what I wanted to get at in terms of the old syncline and anticline comparison. So in an anticline, the oldest part is in the center. Okay, and in, in the syncline, the youngest part is also in the center, but the reverse. You see how these are kind of just flipped upside down, and that helps us to understand things. Now let's talk about folds and how they're classified. So you know what? This picture is all weird. Let me uh, pause and fix it. Folds are actually classified by three different varieties, depend on their dip, it's, it's their angle here. If they are uh, completely, you know, see how we have a, one that's uh, curved, okay, in this type of a direction, then the, if the angle is between zero and 10 degrees, so it might actually be more like this, okay, if that angle between here and here is between zero and 10 degrees, it's called recumbent. All right, if it's uh, between 10 and 70, so if it's uh, striking up at a higher angle, so let's say 50 degrees or something like that, and this is the incline right here, um, or the, uh, the dip angle, then that is called inclined. And then if it's totally like this, then it is upright when you get like that, which is basically 70 to 90 degrees. So we can classify our folds based upon, well, bottom their angles. Okay, so that, it concludes our discussion of structural geology, our second to last podcast in this chapter. We will see you in class. Bye.